I have Jilly in here with me. Uh, Jilly was one of the Mustangs that we got in the January auction. We have been doing more consistent work the past couple months. They did have a pretty long stint in quarantine because of uh, upper respiratory infection that most of them had contracted. They are a little behind on their progress because of that, but Jilly in particular is making great progress on everything. She already picks up her feet pretty well without much of a fight. And that's the same for the front and the backs. Oh, she's gonna make a liar out of me now that I'm talking good about her. I just did this right before Faye walked out and she did a lot better than she is doing now. There we go. I'll go ahead and just pick it up. I'll work on holding it out here. I already picked him out, so I don't need to do that again. But she's been doing extremely well and leading as well. We are working a little bit more on her backing up when I back up to her. And she is working on a lot less pressure with that. And we have done a lot of the other groundwork with her. So today I was getting her used to the saddle pad when Faye walked up. And I'll start with it folded in half. And I'll just let her check it out. And I'll just start rubbing her down with it. And I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Because what horses see on one side does not transfer to the other side. So just because your horse is okay with something on the left side does not mean they're going to be okay with it on the right side. That's why you have to do things on both sides when it comes to training horses. So I already knew she was okay with that. Just because I'm doing this with her today does not mean I'm going to saddle her up today or even try to saddle her up. There are a lot of things that I like to get done before saddling a horse. Just because if you just throw a saddle on, and you don't do all the prep work, you're gonna miss a lot of stuff in the training and the horses revert a lot easier because of that. So now that we've got that done on both sides, I'll throw it back up here on their left side because that's where we're gonna tack her up for most of the time. The only difference is, is we're just messing with her, seeing if she could do it with on the other side. And I'm just gonna let her pack that pad around. I'm just gonna let her get used to that moving when she's moving because as she moves her shoulders are going up her hips are going forward so that saddle pad is actually rubbing on her back and rubbing on her shoulders and hips in different ways so that's stuff they need to be used to if you got a horse and you could throw the saddle pad up on it just fine when it's standing still it doesn't always necessarily mean that once you get the feet moving it's going to be the same thing Another thing I want to get used, get her used to is putting some uh, pressure in her cinch area, in her girth area here. This is her girth. So I want her to get used to something touching her up there too. Now I've already done a lot of prep work with her just with my hands touching her all over. But this right here is an excellent way to demonstrate and uh, simulate uh, cinch pressure on a horse. So now that she's there, I'll go ahead and ask her to move her shoulder over to get over on the other side of that rope. And when I'm doing that, she, I don't know if you guys noticed, but she stepped over that rope a few steps ago, but she wasn't getting the step right with her shoulders how I wanted to see him. I want her to cross that outside foot over the inside foot. So when I'm flexed this way, this becomes the inside foot, this is the outside foot. So I want that outside foot to cross over the inside. Don't, I don't want her to step on herself though, but if she goes forward, I will release that pressure because she's making a step in the right direction. So I'll go again, that was even better. And I want her to get used to this being tight 
So I'll go ahead and get that tightened up around her girth. I'll just pull up on it. And same thing, you want them to move their feet. Now I'm sitting here and I'm blocking her face so she doesn't come over the top of me if she decides that she wants to start bucking. But you can see with this pressure, she's pretty wound up. And that's one of the reasons I'm not gonna throw a saddle on her today. She still needs to get used to this pressure before we just strap something to her and say, have fun. So we get her used to that pressure like this. And she's starting to move out a little bit better. And when she does, I'll release that pressure. I'll give her her reward. I'll go again. Right there, she didn't care at all. She wasn't getting wound up. She just moved off. So we'll give her that break there on that. And just for good measure, we'll do it again. Get it nice and tight. I'll have her take a couple steps this time. And then release. Good girl. Before I climb up on the fence to get her ready for something being above her, I need her to be able to send around in both directions because I'll be sending her around off the fence. And we've only done this a couple times, so she still does have some work to be done with that before I'm going to even think about saddling her. And I'm not going to rush this. I'll let her take her time with it. I typically won't saddle a horse until I can get them to lead up to me on the fence, get parallel to the fence, and I can rub them down with my leg. If I can't do any of that, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to stress them out by rushing them through the saddling process because you'll run into more issues if you do that and you'll create more issues if you do that. If you take your time and you do all this stuff, there'll be less issues in the long run that you have to fix. And I'm just looking for a step. Once she makes a step, I'll quit bumping. Right there. And that's okay if she swings her butt out at first. Eventually though, I will want her to stay where she is and just get parallel. And that's why I was saying sending around is very important to have before you get up on the fence because if you can't send your horse around or if it's not respecting the lead enough to do that, you're going to have a runaway horse on the fence and it could end up pretty ugly. And plus they need to know how to send around because if they get out of position, you need to put them back into position by sending them off and then bringing them back through. I would like her butt to be closer to the fence. But for this being my first time on the fence and her to pick it up that quick, I really don't have any complaints. Now, if she's going to get out of position again here, I'm going to get her back in position maybe one or two more times and see if I could get her nice and parallel and then call that a win. Because the next time when I come out here and I ask her to get parallel, she's going to immediately know, oh yeah, I need to get next to him up here. And when she stays nice and square like this, nice and parallel, when she's coming up, I'll give her plenty of breaks. I'll give her plenty of rewards. That way she understands that she knows that she's doing the right thing. Good girl. Now she's licking and chewing. She's getting a nice release. I'll go ahead and just let her hang out for a minute. So right there, she's staying pretty parallel. If I had a couple more steps out of this, she would be right up next to me. I could probably throw my leg over, but like I said, we're not gonna be doing that today. So I'm gonna give her a huge break right here before asking her to come up another step. Because I want her to understand that this is what I'm asking for, and I might ask for this next step, and she might swing her butt out, and I'll have to reset her. So I wanna give her a nice reward here so she understands. Come on up, sweetie. That this is where she needs to be. Ask one more step here. Like I said, she might swing her butt out on this next step. That was pretty good. Let 
One more step. Good girl. Let's ask her right there. That's pretty much exactly where I want her. Her butt could be a little more close to me, but that was pretty good right there. She took a step back, so I'll ask her to come up one more time. Oh, she almost had it. All right. So like I said, you want to end on a good note. So I'll just get her to come back up to me here. Good girl. Ask her to take a couple steps so her eyes at least above in front of my knee there. And this is where I'm going to end for this fence work. We do have a couple more things to work on, especially when it comes to sending around on the left side. Um, she needs some work with that. And she'll need a little bit more work on the fence work. She did great when I was sacking her out with the saddle pad there. So we won't have to do too much more work there. It's just um, pretty much maintenance on it just to keep it up, to keep showing her that it's not a bad thing. And other than that, I'm really proud of her progress for as far as we know, being an unhandled Mustang two months ago, two or three months ago to being what she is now, she's come a long way in that short amount of time. So I'm, I'm extremely happy and we're just gonna keep building.